Howdy folks, my name's Darren from RC Scale Models and today we have another kit. This one is from Hobby Boss. This is a 135 scale. I'm not sure how you pronounce this. If I do get it wrong, I do apologise. Mumpflosh Schlepper Alpha Panzerwagen I Alpha A with armour trailer. If I totally butchered that, I do apologise, but... I think that's how it's done. Um, as I say, my German is crap, basically. Um, let's take a look at this one. So it's a standard Hobby Boss box. They are, I like their boxes because they're quite sturdy, well packaged. It's the same as Trumpeter. There is a link somewhere, but I'm not sure what it is and stuff like that. Uh, standard Hobby Boss armour. I've had this kit for a while now. Um, so we have this side of the box, which is in markings. A little bit of fellow etch, a couple of advertisement for some earlier vehicles, um, some warning symbols. 135 scale, kit number 80146 as we work our way along. That's what the scheme will look like, it's all grey, it's, it's the early Panzer grey as they call it. So it would be pretty cool. Uh, it, it has got copyright of uh, 2016 so I think the kit was released around that time. As for what we get in the kit, is standard instructions, advertisement, all of these kits are, so I imagine they're probably out now. Uh, the flanker, Russian, SU-37 uh, full back and then we're loaded with plastic like I say it's covered Trumpeter does this it will protect your storage for little other sides which is where they put all their small detail parts so we'll take a closer look at this and instructions So it's standard instructions from Hobby Boss, it's their black and white just like Trumpeter does. Um, we have a little bit of inf warning inf info and the same in uh, the country it's made in. Is it um, Japan or something? Whatever it is. I, I do get it all mixed up. So pretty standard, it's like a photocopy version. Very first page as always, it's always laid out like this, is your sprues. Everything in this greyish section parts are not required um, so there is a turret so technically you can do this kit with the uh, turret because this is basically a small tractor or tractor as they called it in Germany um, how they got around by making tanks early of the war was to do with the treaty after World War One Germany was forbidden to make any military vehicles and how they got around it was by making lower chassis sections like you see here and they're calling them tractors and then later on after, as, as the progress got through the war started uh, it's small modifications they can add a turret and make it into a tank so every type of thing conflict that type of thing early time there was a loophole and basically that's how they got around it by making vehicles but this is pretty cool because there is some kind of interior with this kit so you can have all the hatches open, which is I'm going to do with, I want to do this with a diorama, um, like a uh, small farm, this loading up and another tank, some crew figures, I think they look pretty cool, but you could do whatever you want, like I say, it is a basic interior, I don't know how accurate this is, but I think it would be more than sufficient, so we are working with what looks like the uh, section at the front, which would be the transmission, as you build that up inside the interior section we have some firewalls we have the side the floor the rear we have the seats the levers the levers makes the bathtub hold but it's done in three parts but you're making up the interior part as well that could all go in next section is working on drive sprocket Road wheels, return rollers, suspension arms. It's a very basic suspension for the vehicle back in the time. 
bear in mind these vehicles were made not long after World War One, so the tracks and the vehicle is going to be very basic and just a very early design springs um, dry sprocket so you'll be protecting all of that and it has this like support bar protecting it we have individual links for the tracks um, they are calling out for 87 links to 88 links give or take how tight you want the track um, but I don't like these tracks from Hobby Boss because they're, they're individual plastic links they don't work very well, they don't clip together very well, they don't glue very well, they're just bad overall. So I will be replacing these with either some metal tracks of, that I have of ordered and I uh, do have plastic tracks from other kit manufacturers with work. work. Um, there's resin tracks out there so the possibility of changing these is perfectly fine but I just don't like these plastic tracks, not individual links. I prefer link and length tracks for plastic. So you've got to repeat that twice. They do show that the, the uh, pin is facing on the inside of the tank. And then once that's done, we have the front uh, glacier uh, transmission cover type piece going on. Looks like fuel tanks. The front top glacier going in. And then here, this looks like um, the engine. Very basic engine. Um, I'm not familiar what, what engine goes in this vehicle um, I would have to do my research and check out how accurate this kit is if I need to scratch build anything or add anything just in case you may see it but I think it would be more than sufficient it looks pretty good to me um, maybe a little bit of wiring and a couple of more pipes but I don't think you would need an awful lot Once you've built the basic engine up, that can go in the back of the vehicle. You've got a couple of more pipes to add to it, a couple of support brackets. And then the upper superstructure, which would be where they would touch their turret as well. Um, but obviously this one that hasn't got the turret, it's, this is how they modify it. By removing the hatches that you see here and then adding the small turret and early tanks. Add the, the machine guns and, as well. So this is the upper superstructure, I believe this is moulded in one part. We have some radio equipment going inside, some support brackets, pilots over the back of the engine. Uh, we do have decals as you work your way along, just for some detail. I don't know how, how good they will be, but we'll, we'll check. This looks like the engine deck, but they're calling it the hull. But that's, it. But it, that is, that's basically the, the engine deck as you work your way through. Exhausts. Superstructure again with the hatches open or closed, it's your option. Same as the engine deck, hatches all open or closed. Because there is an interior, um, and what I want to do, like I mentioned, with a diorama and stuff with figures on a farm, this towing the trailer and the crew figures unloading the shells onto another tank. And obviously, they're near a farm because they steam through France, that kind of thing. And obviously, they've uh, stopped for a minute for a rest and reload their equipment near a farm so that's what I roughly want to depict in my scene that's what and what the reason why I have this vehicle so and also you can have the front cover open so it's ideal to have you can even have like I say this front cover open on the floor and it, a, a German uh, crew member working on on the vehicle because it might have slightly have issues it the possibilities is endless I, I do like kits like this that are small, easy, not a lot of parts, but are, are more than enough to make a, a good scene without being overly complicated. And then um, the upper superstructure again, we have photo etched parts, more hatches. Again, you can have open or closed. This, I'm not sure what that is. We have the towing always at the front. And then here is the back of the vehicle. We have basically, it's like a mini uh, bonnet or uh, trunk and they've got a couple of tools inside again open or closed the hatches open or closed option your fenders come as three parts that's very simple you can attach them back to the back of the vehicle again we have the back fenders a couple of boxes we have some this is the towing section for the trailer 
because it also has a spring attached to it so that probably takes some of the shock when it's bouncing around over rough terrain because um, these vehicles were quite light, small and quite fast for the time and then we have some grab handles more tools, so it would be basic tools, axe, spade, the jack, wire cutters crowbar type thing, so very basic pioneer tools Uh, and then once the tools have been built and painted you can attach them that's what I like doing we have further etch covers and they do explain here to put them on a hard surface use something quite hard as a roller and wrap it round but they don't really give you much dimensions of how big of a tube you need to wrap around but you need it to be more than enough to wrap around the fender I wouldn't worry about bending these up too much if they do get slightly dented and damaged, it just add to the look of the vehicle. The fender is going to be slightly rusty, but not too much because it's early time, um, and the vehicle. I, I I can't see the vehicle being beaten up too much. This is the trailer section. It's a basic box. With these shells are already in a stack, and basically. Um, you just slot them in this square, this pit is photo etch. Um, I wouldn't worry about painting the whole tyre shell because you're not going to see it, you're only going to see the top of the shell so you, I would only paint the top half, I wouldn't worry about the rest of it. But you do get within the kit which doesn't say in the instructions I've noticed because I have had a sneak peek, is there are a couple of shells that are singles, single shells so that you can basically have them dotted around for your diorama which is nice. The rest of the box going together you can have it open or closed. Again, I'm going to have mine open, and then it's the basic frame and the axles and the wheels, fenders for the trailer, so that shouldn't be too difficult. And then the, once that's built, the box and the ammunition can go on the back of it. Very simple trailer. And then it's ready to attach to the vehicle. Well, so, so it'd be a basic tractor and trailer carrying the ammo and basic colours. They got it for Eastern Front 1941, but you could do the Battle of France as well. It's pans of grey basically all over, and pretty simple paint scheme. It shouldn't be too difficult, which doesn't look like a difficult kit neither, but it's quite detailed for what it is. Now this, let's check the plastic out and see what we get. So the very first small parts in the little box you get at the back. So we get a couple of springs, which I don't remember seeing in instructions. I was imagine it's to do with suspension, which is probably a nice touch. So just be careful of not losing them. Basic lights, a couple of vision ports. Shouldn't be too much difficult. Basic photo etch. This is for the ammunition to store. A couple of grills to go over your engine deck. A couple of support brackets. So it shouldn't be too difficult. Basic markings with just German crosses. So I don't know how well you can see these, but they're just basic crosses. One of mine has a bit of a ding in it, but it shouldn't be not a problem. So the very first sprue straight off the bat, we will take a look at this one. So we do have a protective piece. I'm not sure what's underneath here. Where's the end of the tape? I do like this tension to detail from Trumpeter, Hobby Boss, stuff like that, especially on these fragile parts. So this is what they were protecting, these very fine pipes, but even when it comes to cutting these off the sprue, you're going to have to be super careful, you don't want to break them. Hatches, the main upper superstructure, this is where your toe, your trailer goes to, 
the wheels for the trailer this is part of the trailer this is the trailer box these are the shells that I was on about and these are the single shells this is for inside the trailer you do get an optional further etch or plastic it's your call so here is the detail for the superstructure it's more than sufficient it looks pretty good the hatches don't look too bad there's the spring and towing section these tabs you see on the end are the ones you have to remove that's so they don't have tons of jets and pins everywhere that's what I like as well these are these fragile parts that was covered the wheels don't look too bad they do have writing on there and it does look like continental to me I'm not quite sure if that actually says that can't really tell but it, it looks like continental to me which is strangely enough how they'll get around copyright but I don't know unless they paid for it <clears throat> Sorry about that, I just got a foggy coat throat still. I'm still getting over the COVID. I'm all clear, but I just don't feel right still. Still have a bit of a bit of a cough and stuff on my throat. But I should be alright, I'll be alright. Here's your main shells and the single shells, they look really good. Like I mentioned before, when they're facing downwards inside the uh the um the box, you're not gonna really see the, the bottom half of the shell, you're only gonna see the top half, so I'd only paint the actual top half shell in brass it's more than sufficient these single shells look pretty good and there's the basic detail around the box again that looks pretty damn good and then these holes for your shells to sit into again it's optional photo actual plastic it's your call here's more detail around the box there is fine bulk detail looks pretty good to me What we have in this one is the actual tank itself. It's very small, it's not very big. We are looking at about 10 centimeters in, in length for the actual lower sashi. So it's not a very big vehicle, it's probably about two inches, two, three inches. So, more small detail. This is interior floor, transmission covers. This is interior, so all of this will go to the actual tank itself, or tractor, as it was known as. It wasn't a uh, tank quite then. So the lower section, nice detail, it's raised. I think it would be actually like that. The sides look pretty good. There's the uh, transmission cover. There's the hatch to go over the front glacier. And your transmission will be underneath this. Detail parts. There's the interior floor diamond plating. A couple of transmission covers. Small detail parts around the edge. That looks like part. Of, that looks like the actual transmission itself. Part of it is kind of. Is it slide molded from this end? I don't know. More detail parts. There is a couple of flashy points, but it shouldn't be too bad. In here, I'm gonna need to change my blade and my knife. It's not quite in a bag properly, very blunt. So this sprue does have slide mold on it, which is down the bottom here, and this looks like part of the engine block. So you will have parts to, to attach to it all. Possibly a radiator system, I can't remember. Here's some another piece, a couple of small handles or grab hat not grab handles, but they'd be small hatches. I think these are ports for fuel the fuel ports possibly I can't remember because you have a couple of this side here's some piping is to do with the engine this is the engine deck 
if I remember correctly, but they were calling it the hole, but it, it wasn't. Um, here are the hatches for the, the uh, engine deck. That looks like another radiator. Fans, just not sure what that looks like, no idea. Your structural parts. Here's your fuel tanks. A couple of more pipes. A structural piece. Can't remember what they are. This looks like part of the engine. This looks like a structural part near the engine as well. So doesn't look too bad. This parts. Here's some of the uh, detail around these sections. Pretty good fuel tanks. Possibly slide molded from this end. I, I'm not, I can't tell what is and what isn't these days because the kits get better and better. Here are the tracks which are individual links. Like I mentioned, they don't work very well, don't glue very well, don't like these plastic tracks. Normally I complain about rubber tracks and I and I say plastic tracks are really good, but metal tracks are even better. Resin tracks are coming out. I haven't quite tried them now yet. They are meant to be workable. But these are plastic tracks and these are probably the worst plastic tracks I've ever worked with. So I'll be ditching these and I won't be using them. And here we have another side skirts. And this is internal detail again, this is part of your seat, this is part of the seat, this is internal detail. Part this part of a machine gun. Strangely enough you do get some parts in here which is not actually acquired yet because there is a turret in here as well, which is basically for the turret version, so you can do that, but some parts are needed and some parts are not. It was called out in the instructions. So there is defenders with the uh anti-slip diamond pattern internal parts looks like part of the seating machine gun parts which is not needed these look like the magazines more detail parts couldn't tell you what they are though quite warm today as well it's, the time is 11 o'clock in the evening so I'm doing this video quite late and it's still quite warm out there it's been not too bad today though the weather uh, the wheels are uh, coming two sprues so we have basic wheels and the rubber sections so road wheels and the uh, turn roller no, the idle wheel. I always get it mixed up. The detail looks pretty good. It's more than sufficient. Here are a couple of machine gun barrels, which is not needed. But if you was ever going to do it with machine guns, I wouldn't really use these. These don't look that that overly great if you ask me to be honest I'll probably try and get something better than that we have one piece in this bag which is suspension pieces a lot of single small sprues now so this looks like all suspension components even though it's quite a small vehicle but there's a ton of parts so here's the detail for the suspension these are a couple of nice ejector pins you may have to take care of. Um, they may be hidden if they're facing on the inside of the vehicle. You probably may not need to worry about it. More detail parts. These look like more suspension. Suspension. All to do with suspension arms, I believe. That doesn't look too bad. A couple of more wheels. So... I'm not sure if you need the other wheels as well. There's, there is two lots of wheels, so I don't know which ones you need. I know you need these ones though, because I do remember seeing these drive pockets. So we have two of these. 
this is more wheels assembly and drive sprockets and stuff so again it doesn't look too bad so here's some vision ports your main drive sprocket looks pretty good with the bolts as well standard wheels assembly some more brackets the hub springs set the hubs these little wheels are up here these are probably is it idler wheels road wheels drive sprocket and, and return roller so in this bag we will have some more parts this is the turret and other detail parts but again most of this is not needed because this is the tractor version basically so if you wish to uh, not build it as a tractor but you want to build it as the uh, early tank with the machine guns you can go ahead and do that but obviously you have to find the instructions and these are the parts for it but I will show you still even though they're not needed you, you will need a couple of the tools off this sprue but most of this stuff on this sprue is not needed and last piece We have more hatches and stuff, more tools, the spade, the axe, uh, wire colours, a couple of hatches, I'm not sure if we need these, I'm not sure if we need this part, I'm not sure what that is, that's the transmission front cover, glacier, whatever you want to call it, um, yeah, so there's, there's really long pieces and no idea what they are, there's like some kind of crowbar type piece, there's your exhaust pieces, so they're going to have to be uh, heat it, weathered and tiny bit of rust maybe because they will get hot uh, there's a front glacier part a couple of brackets another firewall possibly is that where the transmission comes through there I can't remember a couple of more parts there's your basic tools so yeah that is all the screws that is everything so there you are my friends another kit from Hobby Boss a decent tank like I mentioned it was to do with the uh, Battle of France and stuff and also it's on the Eastern Front so early time 1940s 41 to 43 area of give or take I think so it's going to work perfectly the possibilities with this is perfect for a diorama and stuff because it's this is a great kit it's going to be working well the only thing I don't, don't like as I mentioned before was the tracks but we can get around that like comment subscribe and I'll catch you next time